what's going on what's going on we are back with another matic mondays it's your guy travel matic and if you are new to the channel we talk about all things remote work uh transferring your skills um all that under the sun um and if you're back welcome back we back i think we we're off by like a week because i was traveling but yeah. we have my co-host miss tiffany sports and heels what's going on <laughs> hello good evening welcome back to the states yes yes i'm trying to is that music too loud a little yeah, yeah you, can, you can turn it down a little i think i'm going to be on like nine or something like that something like went down but anyway um yes i am back um I think I, when I was thinking about it, I said, um, that show, I could have probably, no, 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 I couldn't have done it because the, where I was at, the Wi-Fi was kind of crazy. <clears throat> That's what I realized when I was, um, in DR and, um, went there for, um, Carnival, um, wanted to try their Carnival out um and? in la vega uh dominican republic right outside of um santiago okay and um i actually i should have dropped that video a long time ago but um I mean, a few days ago but i just finished it today so just a little video of um just like a little walking video nothing major um Cause I got into so much other stuff. Like I went to some great beaches, man. Like, oh really? Like crazy, crazy um, beaches and stuff. Um, but yeah. Um, but tonight we are talking a little uh, about something a little different. Um, yeah, we've never talked about this before. Yeah, I think we were supposed to talk about this a while ago, <clears throat> but. Um, we didn't um <clears throat> and i think um oh <laughs> on my on my well i always have some interesting stuff to happen on me on trips but you know god's angels be watching over me but um but you know people make it so easy with this traveling um abroad you know like just get your passport get on there get on the plane like man it really is not that easy um there's some things that you need to well um, it is that easy but you know there's some things just like when you're traveling anywhere um whether it's domestic or international that you need to be mindful of right 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 well let me say in certain certain places certain um you know the world is, is shaken up from COVID 19. inflation is high it's people hungry yeah. these people starving so yeah. people do desperate things um uh um when you are an american citizen sometimes you're kind of sought as a atm you like you like a walking atm to some people who have not eaten in like three days so um there's a lot of things that happen in the news lately like it's like people have been getting murdered you know yeah um robbed um, all kind of stuff, you know. Yep. So, um, rich or poor? Yeah, huh? rich or poor. Remember when Kim Kardashian got robbed at her flat in Paris? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That 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 as well. Um, yeah. Even I had an encounter in Paris. So <laughs> we yeah. gonna talk about we gonna talk about all the things you need to be watching out for and mindful of as you're traveling yes and we have first as always mocha bella in the chat what's good what's good mocha and sports says hello um yeah so um you know what and um i don't know where this guy at man it's like the second time my um my guy from brazil was supposed to come on the show so hopefully um he can come on and um 
just chop it up with us. Um, I met him with uh, Rebecca um, in Salvador, and um, he was just like, you know, uh, let's collab. Let's, you know, want to do a live. He has like a small YouTube channel. Um, he just wanted to kind of just jump on. He's a program manager, I believe. Uh, no, pro, yeah, program manager. Um, in 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 um, Brazil, so um, hopefully he comes on. I know last time he kind of got the times mixed up because it's like a two hour difference um, from two, Eastern. Are they? They're two hours behind us. <clears throat> two hours uh, ahead. Oh, so it's like nine p.m. there. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Yeah. So I, I I told him specifically like. 9 p.m. your time. That's what I need you to come on. Follow this link. So, but um, you said you sent me something too. Yep, I sent you two things. So, um, tonight I'm gonna focus on coming. I mean, while all of my tips can be used for anybody, families, men, um, as a female solo solo traveler, I like to, you know, cater some of the things that I talk about for uh, females, ladies. So I have practical things that you should probably carry with you um, domestically and internationally. I use them for both, but specifically for international travel. And then I have a few, one or two things that people are probably going to turn their head at like, what? But yes, I do it. So um, I'm just going to put it out there for the ladies. For the ladies. Yeah. The ladies yeah um and you've purchased um yeah these are part of my normal travel kit no matter where i go like i said domestically or internationally i travel with these things okay give me a minute to keep them up yeah okay i only sent you two but i actually have some here i'm gonna show <laughs> oh you just got a whole entourage i have a whole yes i have a kit it's my safety kit oh this is interesting yeah especially so, since the pandemic so there's a lot of things that can happen okay well her first item um do you see them yeah i have it up okay bam yep so i i slide this under um my hotel door my airbnb uh door i get multiple they have amazon you can get Packs of two, you can get packs of four, I think, but this one's a, uh, just an example. Um, but if you show the video, it, 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 it shows you what it does. So yeah, I like to use that in case, you know, especially if you're a woman and you're traveling solo, if someone comes in your room while you're sleeping in the middle of the night, um, you know, I, there's been a ton of videos. You can see how people get past the door security, um, at a hotel. So, um, I just like to have a little extra layer of protection while I'm sleeping, especially international. Um, it just alerts you so that you can get yourself prepared. Should someone, um, come into your room, um, you know, to harm you or by accident, because I've, I don't know, Adrian, have you ever had somebody come into your room by accident? The hotel gave them a key. Um, they checked in and gave them a key to your room and, or, um, I've had maintenance come into your room. Um, so this is just like a little added extra security. It tends to scare off people who have ill intent. So, yep. I absolutely carry one of those with me. Yeah. I've seen that video before maintenance come into your room and stuff. Yep. 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 <laughs> <laughs> maintenance. This is maintenance. Room service. Yes, room service for the guys. Okay. Um, um this one here. Okay, describe this. <clears throat> this is an extra door lock. So you can put this on again on your hotel door, or you can put it on your door of your Airbnb or your accommodations door. And it's just an, an extra layer of lock security for your door when you're traveling. And you can, there's a little video, I think you can show how kind of how you put it together. 
Again, these just go in my purse or my little travel backpack. Okay, so I just got the set of two portable locks and I'm excited to share this with you because I think this is such a great idea, especially if you either like to travel a lot or you live alone. For security reasons, these are perfect. And I will show you what they look like. They come in this protective case. It's also very easy to take with you if you're traveling somewhere. It's such a small item, but it can make a really, really big difference. And these are the two locks. And I will show you how they work in a second. But you basically place them into the door. And even if someone on the outside has a key, this will prevent them from coming in. So whether it's someone that you don't want into your house, like your landlord, or whether you're in a hotel room and people have access keys to your room, these are perfect for denying entry to anyone else when you're inside. Let's go on, I'll show you how they work. The locks come in two colors in black and red, and they also have different sizes on the opposite ends to fit different types of door locks. To install the lock, simply place the metal part into the slot of the door lock, close the door, and you will see at this point you can still open the door. So what you have to do is place the handle groove to the stud on the metal sheet. Once the step is completed, the door is secured and no one can come in through that door. You can see this is another angle, so you can fully view how this lock works. At this point, the door is secure. If you want to open the door, you will have to take the handle groove off by simply sliding it out of the metal sheet. It's a very convenient and easy process. Yeah, so again, I like this for Airbnbs um, and hotels. security they offer you. And also they're really easy to install. I did not have any problem installing them. It takes literally seconds and you know you're safe. This is a major concern, especially if you're alone. And I would definitely recommend having these in your home and when traveling, I hope you like them. Yeah, so I like this. It's just, again, if you have that along with the door alarm, it just makes your night, your, your first night, your first couple of nights um, you know, a little feel a little safer knowing that you have a little extra security that your intruder will not know about. Nice, nice. Yep, those go in my kit. I mean, that's those are two items. There's some practical items I have in my kit. So I Clorox wipes. I don't know if you guys can see those, but uh, Clorox wipes are super essential, especially being that we're still in a global pandemic um i wipe my airport seat off i my airplane seat my airplane tray table all the side armrests when i get into the hotel i write i wipe down all the handles um all the knobs all the light switches um i wipe the nightstands the table the desks i wipe everything down that i'm going to be touching um so that um, I know, you know, hotels sometimes do a good job of cleaning, uh, sometimes they don't. So this is just my, again, my layer of protection during this time that we're in a pandemic to make sure that it's, you know, I'm gonna be clean of germs. Um, I also bring, which I don't have in front of me, uh, a spray to spray for bed bugs. Um, I also bring my little Lysol, spray Lysol um, the Clorox wipes are great internationally when you're going to an outdoor restaurant um, or in, you know, going to a bathroom. You know, these things in some areas have been a lifesaver because you walk in these public bathrooms and you're lucky if you have plumbing. So you need something to wipe the bottom of your shoes. You need something to wipe the wall so you can put your hand on to stabilize yourself before you use the bathroom. Like these two things stay in my purse when I'm traveling. Um, speaking of purses, ladies, gentlemen, you two, I always carry a crossbody bag that has multiple zippers. I carry it with the zippers on the inside so that no one can, when the crossbody, it's hard to snatch away from your hand. 
Um, and two, with the multiple zippers, it gives me room to put the Cloroxes and the, you know, the wipes and my money, my passport if I need it, um, any kind of travel documents, my cell phone, um, my cell phone charger, which you should always carry an extra battery charger with you. Um, just kind of all those essential things that you're going to need on your, 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 uh, your suntan lotion. I carry bug spray if I'm going to a tropical location, but a crossbody bag, it doesn't have to be expensive. It doesn't have to have a label. Um, it's just something that you are comfortable carrying around you in all weather conditions, um, to keep your stock, your things safe and secure. Um, of course I carry masks in my kit because you never know. And I know people don't like wearing them since the pandemic, but let me tell you something. I've used these in people's bathrooms <laughs> because <laughs> you just never know what you're going to run into. So I always keep, um, masks. This is kind of bougie, but Adrian, you might understand this one. I keep a straw because I hate paper straws. Have you gone to some countries? Europe is really big on paper straws. And you know, after about five minutes, those paper straws turn to mush. So I keep this little travel container with me and it's actually a straw. And it even comes with like a little cleaner so I can clean it out. Oh, okay. Um, the other thing I carry with me electronic wise is this. This is a carbon monoxide alarm. Mm. Carbon monoxide is a silent, mm. deadly killer. You will not know if you're subject to carbon monoxide poison while you're sleeping or while you're enjoying your Airbnb space or your hotel. This alarm goes in my room and I make sure that it's on and working and operable. Um, I got this off of Amazon. Again, these are just some countries don't have the same level of protection when it comes to fire detectors and, and alarms. And so I carry one of these is always just safe, rather be safe than sorry. Um, and then my last, oh, my other couple of things. My other thing is a small flashlight. <laughs> uh, when I was in Cuba, I can't even tell you how many times the power went out but it went out a lot in the middle of the night. Um, so finding your way in your Airbnb, um, we couldn't use the elevator. We had to go up the steps, you know, your flashlight on your phone works great, but when you only got 20% battery left because you've been out all day, these little pocket and they clip on too. mine does it clips on. So these little pocket flashlights are great. Keeping you safe. I used it in Cuba when the lights went out when I was walking back from my event and the streets were completely dark and my cell phone light wasn't bright enough to read the street signs. So this is ridiculously bright. Um, it's called the Nebo. Um, and it's really bright. So I was able to like be, uh, people were following me, like help. We were like walking together because I was the only one who had some kind of light to be able to see. Um, Another thing that I keep with me for safety is hotels always have these little things of soap. I take them and I keep them. And whenever I go out of the, out of town, I keep them to wash my hands. So I always have access to a little bitty tube of soap. Mm. Just never know when that's going to come in handy. And then I lock my luggage when I'm out of my room. Um, again, these little locks, you can get them. I found them at TJ Maxx. You can find them at Marshall's in the travel section. Uh, which are great travel sections, by the way, Marshall's, TJ Maxx, Ross, they have some great travel safety tips on um, things there, items there. And I get these little locks. I don't put them when I'm traveling on my luggage, when I'm going to the airport, I put them when I get to my Airbnb or my location. I've also used these little locks to lock my stuff to something. So no, you know, yeah, this is a tiny lock, but I have bigger locks too, but I lock it to like a dresser or um, a nightstand or something that's hard to move or will make noise when you move it to lock my luggage to it. So you can't just walk out with my luggage. You're going to have to do mm -hmm. some heavy lifting to get my, to get my items out of there. And then, um, my final item that goes in my kit, um, is this, 
This is a package of disposable bedding because I've been to places where I wouldn't sleep on the bedding. And even when I asked for clean new bedding, I wouldn't sleep on the bedding. So I have disposable bedding. It's a queen size. Um, it's called Luxury Essentials. I can send Adrian the link to send to you guys. It, she is black owned, by the way, black female owned company. And it's an entire bedding set that's disposable. And it feels like cotton. So it's really convenient. I take these when I'm going to be somewhere I know I'm going to be a little bit more remote. You know what I mean? Um, you, you know what I mean? <laughs> when you're like on an island somewhere and the accommodations look nice, but it's just a little not as what you would have liked um then i keep these and how do i sleep on these for more than one day is i don't let housekeeping come into my room to clean my room i just clean it myself as i'm there along the stay i don't actually like for people to be in my room or access to my accommodations my entire stay so i only if they do come in i make sure they come in while i'm there um especially when I'm solo traveling. So these are kind of some of the essentials I keep in my kit. I know it's a lot, but these kind of things give me peace of mind, especially as a, a, a woman solo traveler. Wow. Okay. <laughs> let's, um, let's give it up for Tiff and her wonderful uh, ensemble of things there. Yeah, yeah. We appreciate that. But um, cool. That is, um, that is a, a, you know, the one thing, the uh, carbon monoxide, carbon, carbon monoxide um, detector. detector. I was looking at that too. Um, <clears throat> um, not too long ago um, when, um, you know, a lot of these older places, you go abroad, they kind of, um, they're kind of not up to date, up to, up to par. So yeah. you can kind of have that, um, you can kind of have that uh, jumping off and you don't want that. That is a silent killer. Um, let yeah. me quickly go to Tiffany, um, who in Portland, I appreciate the super chat of $10. Hey Tim, thank you. Thank you so much for supporting the show here. Um, let's see here. Yeah, that's um, a lot of good stuff. Some stuff I probably wouldn't have all that stuff, but. Um, yeah, I mean, some stuff is, like I said, yeah. most of the stuff I mean, is gonna be specific to the ladies. <clears throat> yes, definitely. Cause we have a, you know, we're very particular about how we travel and we, we have to do things differently than guys, you know, especially when we have to go to the bathroom. Our, what we have to do in order to do that is a lot more than what you guys have to do. We have to almost get undressed to, to go to the bathroom. You guys don't. Um, so right. we, have, we have to make sure we are in a comfortable, clean, somewhat clean environment to be able to go. Right, right. I, you bring the um, you bring the thought. Um, I saw, and I never knew what this was. Uh, the name of it was called it's called a bidet you ever use a bidet before a bidet i'm i was like i've seen it but i was like uh, i don't know if i can sit on that you know that's uh, you you definitely need because they don't have a um most of them don't have a seat cover like a toilet does you know they it's just it's just but on ivory um but on i mean but well on, i mean then there's portable seat covers that you can carry with you um, mm. And I, I have carried portable seat covers. I actually, you love them. You, you, <laughs> I love them. You love the uh, bidets? Oh yeah. Okay. Clean as a whistle. <laughs> um, that's what that's that's what it's for. Is to keep it clean. Right, right. But just they're on everything in Europe. They're on everything. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. But they, yeah. I mean, they have them in. Um, in Latin America too, mm -hmm. you know, but yeah, we we are pretty much the only place that don't have them. We got our dirty butts. <laughs> dirty butts, you dirty butt Americans. 
Yeah, but um, cool, cool. Any other um comments or let me see, you got Chief, Chief Mocha, they talking, they talking. Yeah, yes, I'm always prepared to travel. Uh, traveling is amazing and fun, and you have great experiences. But um, as Adrian and I have both will probably talk about tonight, there have been some moments. <laughs> Uh, and so having some of these things are what help you get through those moments. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the, the first one that I thought about was like just being aware of your surroundings. Um, like I said, you're kind of a, a walk and talk. No matter how much you try to blend in with the, um, you know, the locals and you're always going to be spotted as a gringo. You know, you're always... You're American. They can just tell. They can just seem like they can almost smell you. Yeah. <laughs> like, you're American. What I even saying anything, you know, because, you know, most, let's say most American guys, you know, we kind of have that same uh, attire. Attire. <laughs> you know, the, 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 the white beater, the uh, cargo shorts, or the um, socks, with, socks with sandals on. <laughs> Yeah, the brother with the socks and sandals on, and, the, and well, the white guys that have like uh, just the regular flip flops on, or or the, in the ocean with their underwear, they Hanes underwear, and their shorts hanging off their butt in the ocean with a white beater. You got to have a white beater on. And too. a white beater on. <laughs> yeah. Um, and for women, they pay attention. You know, men pay attention to women, right? So when you're traveling, um, you know, you you have eyes on you. Um, and if you're whether you're semi attractive or not, somebody's looking, right? Mm. You know, it don't take a lot for y'all to get interested. So somebody's looking, and so along with paying attention to your surrounding, is paying attention to something other than your cell phone. Kind of walking with intent and knowing where you're going. Um, if you're obviously you're somewhere you've not been before, unless you've gone to the same location multiple times. So go on Google Maps and map out what's around you um so you can kind of be familiar with the area around you so you can walk with intention ladies the last thing you want to be doing is this your whole time walking is looking on your phone like that's that's a habit that we have in the us that we have to really have to break when you out of the country because first of all walking with your cell phone in your hand the only thing you're doing is calling attention to the fact that you have a money-making device in your hand that they can snatch from you and make money off of you uh, let alone you're only going to stick it somewhere where it can be pickpocketed and pickpocketing is big no matter where you go us or here i mean us or abroad pickpocketing is big um and cell phones are an easy target a lot of ladies like to carry those little wristlets and they dangle their cell phone or their wallets from their wristlets while well, somebody has to do it I've, I've seen that story is walk by and snatch that wristlet and they're gone. They're on bicycles or they're in a car, a moving car, or, you know, they're, they're on their foot. You're not going to chase them down. So, you know, just be mindful of your surroundings. Right. And Mocha says, I have to ask you guys, do you feel safe in those countries? Now she's speaking about more Latin America, South America. Um, I assume, um, Europe, you know, you can get pickpocket a lot. Pickpocket is really big in Europe. Um, yeah. um, but you know, that th this is, this is that age old question, you know, <laughs> that a lot of people will give you. And I always tell them to turn on the TV and look at the news yeah. and you're going to probably see one of these three things, uh, a mass shooting here. You're going to see, uh, a little kid got shot or, um, just domestic violence, just, you know, he didn't like her, she didn't like him, she just blew his brains out or whatever. So it's like countless, countless yeah. um, uh, uh, murders, killings in the States. And I think sometimes we just become immune to it. It's just like, you know, this is the land of the free and brave. We, we good, we good. Desensitized. Uh, Mocha, do I feel safe? I feel safe because I do lots of research. I go on YouTube, I go on TikTok, I go on Google, and I look for those common scams. Um, for example, Europe. One of your questions was about in Europe. So 
Paris. Paris is very well known for pickpocketing. Everywhere is known for pickpocketing. And they tell you, like, even there's parts of Brazil, Adrian, I think you can testify that there's they're known for a little bit more, you know, pickpocketing. But in Paris, around the Eiffel Tower, they will tell you that they're going to pickpocket you. And I actually had an experience. Uh, I'm standing in front of the Eiffel Tower. We were, uh, my friend and I were talking to a vendor. So we're off to the side of the flow of traffic. And significantly off to the side because i'm always aware of if you're in the flow of traffic somebody can easily bump into you and i hate being bumped into um so i stepped like closer to where the vendor was which was completely off to the side of traffic and a man like fell into me like there's no way he could have fallen in because there's no one around me um and he just kind of bumped into me and he reached inside my coat um and because I was such aware that pickpocketing was big in Paris, I wore a coat that had faux pockets, which mean they were fake pockets. So they, to the outside person, they looked like regular pockets. Um, but I knew that there, there were not pockets. And I was wearing my handy dandy crossbody that I showed you guys, which was on me, but again, facing on the inside and everything was all zipped up. So um, he wasn't able to get anything from me. The only thing he did get from me was a very, um black english cuss out an old-fashioned alabama south ohio cuss out that's what he got that's the only thing he got was cussed out for about 15 minutes <laughs> even though he was long gone i was still cussing but again doing the research on where you're going to go whether you're going to chicago or cairo whether you're going to paris kentucky or paris france you need to be mindful of the common scams right right um and i was gonna say too um a lot of countries uh not not i mean not many but a few countries it's illegal to own guns um in some of these countries like nobody owns guns like we in the good old usa <laughs> owns own, everybody got a gun that don't need a gun and um it, it, it or it, to get a gun in certain countries south america europe latin america it's you know it you have to go through a lot of processes to get a gun you know i mean just not giving it to anybody low 18 like you go on a gun here you go on a rifle here at 18 that without any permit some places here like in georgia you, it's uh no no permit to carry um concealed um i think texas the same so it's a lot a lot of free relaxed gun laws for people to drive around and have road rage and um and just pull your gun out, you know. Um, so it's you know it's it's just crazy with the gun laws, and I'm I'm like, you don't hear all these mass shootings like you hear um, in the states abroad. Um, so I think it's just those stigmas that people just have in their head, like you know, hurt is dangerous, you know. And it's like, you know, it's it's not like that. Um, yeah. It, and like you like just said, it's dangerous everywhere. So, you know, like Chicago, you know, you can get your bag snatched in Chicago or, you know, L.A. or New York or Cincinnati, you know, Atlanta. It doesn't really, you know, it's not really everywhere has some element of of crime. Um, it's just going to be different abroad. And you need to be mindful because you don't live there. Like Mocha, you live in Miami, Florida. Now, you know, there's some parts of Miami that if it's 11 o'clock at night, you don't want to ride through with all your, you know, all your diamonds and, 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 and Louis Vuitton and all that. Right. But you know, generally speaking, Miami is safe, but there are going to be some areas like South beach that have more traffic that you might be prone to more. <clears throat> so it's just, you know, you being living in Miami, you know, where, how to navigate that. And so looking up that information for another country is what you would need to do in order to stay safe. Yeah. Um, just doing your research is definitely the key. Yeah. Doing your research. Um, and you know, it's all on YouTube. It's all on Google. You can always, um, Google safe neighborhoods, typically where your, your hotels are going to be at, um, your chain rest chain hotels and restaurants um are going to be where your um your 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 safer place is at um but i i had this one thought um like i said my journeys 
Um, sometimes you just don't know, right? Yeah. So um, I want to bring up a story. Um, this was in Puerto Rico. Now, there's a place called La Perla. And La Perla sits actually in old San Juan. But La Perla is probably 10% of old San Juan. So that little 10% of old San Juan La Perla, you can get killed over there um, if you're doing the wrong things. Now, what are the wrong things? This is one, uh, this just happened like three weeks ago. Um, I'll get that down. Three tourists stabbed in Puerto Rico after being told to stop filming in popular neighborhood. Um, and uh, ironically, these people from South Carolina too. I was like, yeah, them, you know, us South Carolina people. <laughs> yeah, what you get, that ain't what you wanted to say. <laughs> no, I'm I'm from South Carolina, but um, but they were. This is the key thing here. After being told to stop filming, and I have a a, a personal testimony about this La Perla, because I went to. Uh, Puerto Rico in January for um, Sansei, which is called San Sebastian Festival. Mm -hmm. And so San Sebastian is in um, old, San, I mean, uh, old San Juan, um, the old area where you see a lot of tourists, like I said, all tourists. But that 10% La Perla is right, and it, they have, <laughs> this is a, this is the hood, but it's like a, it's like a, um, it's like a, a Commuter 13, like in um, Medellin. Uh, it's like, um, I'm trying to think of other little places. They're kind of like, like uh, the market in, um, um, I think it's Barato Market in Cartagena. Mm -hmm. so you really got to go with a tour guide. Off. Like in this place, in this example, it was Sansei. So it's, it, it was actually an entrance. To, it's an entrance to get in. It's a one way in, one, one way in, and it's an out, one way out. But it's kind of like a circle and so you know you kind of walk in it's all it's all a part of the festivity you can go down to la perla i had been wanting to go to la perla so when i went to la perla i'm you know getting content and i have my osmo um which is in here a little small pocket handheld camera and so i'm walking and just you know recording recording and this guy sees me he says delete that delete that and I'm like, huh? Like, and so, it, you know, it's like 50 people around me already that's there for the festival or whatever. It's, it's vendors and all that stuff. And I'm like, uh, and I'm like, okay. And I knew I had heard something about it being a dangerous area, but I thought it was just going to be, you know, a free fall where it's just everybody's having fun. And so, um, let me get this off. And so the guy says, he didn't know Spanish. I knew enough to talk to him about it. Mike. You know, uh, okay, okay, okay. So, I, but he couldn't tell from the from the Osmo. It's a little screen, so he was kind of confused if it was deleted or not. And I'm like, see, no, no mas, no mas, no mas. He's like, oh, in serio, serio. I'm like, see, no mas, no mas. But I had other videos from previously that day. Right. So he was kind of like thinking, like, man, I don't know if this dude. And so he called this this other guy. So it's like. It's like all these people looking at me and, uh, and, us, and us together, or whatever. Oh my god! The, guy, the, the guy's like, it's "Okay, it's okay, it's okay." You, the younger guy was like crump, but then the older guy, I guess his OG, was like, "Yo, chill, chill, chill." Like what? And I'm like, I said, I delete the photo, the video, and then I'm like, he, but he's like tripping. I'm like, "It's no more in here." He's like, "You sure?" And I'm like, "No, it's no more in here." Look, look, look. So I'm showing him the video, and he's like, "Oh, okay." He's like, "Well." Uh, he was like, did you record any of those guys or whatever? And I'm like, no, I'm like, I'm like, I'm just here recording the event, you know? And so I'm like, okay. And I'm thinking like, it, he, they must, he must've thought I was recording him or something like that, but oh I wasn't really, God. he was to my side. He was to my side and I was just walking down the walkway, you know, down the little streetway. And so, um, I was like, nah, I ain't recording no guys or whatever. And so he was like, okay, okay. He said, you cool, you cool, whatever. He's like, it's all right, it's all right. So we dapped up and I was like, yeah, I said, no, you know, no, no hard problems, man. no, no problems or whatever. He's like, okay, you good, you good, you good, man, you good. And so I just left and, um, 
because <laughs> the nexus was like because i i had them recorded like well i had recorded like two i still had one part in my phone i had a little video on my phone of the perla but when he caught me he hit, i had the osmo in my hand and so they was just focused on the osmo but i had like a video from the perla like just a little small clip thank god you didn't let them know you had that too actually i had forgot about that until i left out of there um i didn't, I didn't oh even gosh. remember about that and but um yeah so that was just just crazy but these guys were with the same issue but they were not in San say this was just like you know a regular day because people actually go down there for like tours and stuff you know like la perla is kind of like a it's just like a community 13 like you just go you take pictures or whatever but like i guess to to, to do a video like yeah they don't want that and so um so long story short i, I was t talking with the lady going to the airport like two days later and i was telling her about that she was like she's like yeah they kind of funny with like videos like you got to kind of get their permission to do a video and like i kind of had the same thing happen to me my first time because she was a, she was from like new jersey and um she was doing uber there in, in puerto rico and she said um yeah i went in there and they they walked me out of there like she said they they walked her out of because they thought she was like like some type of informant or something like that she, Yo. people who like she's like the police don't go into la perla she's like you would never really see a police officer in la, la perla because they know not to go in there and i was like for real she's like no so like if you go in there you need to be you know cool because no police ain't gonna come in and if coming in and looking for you if you come up missing and so um i was like this is crazy they're like it's only like a little 10 percent pocket of um of, of old san juan they got the best view in old san juan it's like it's it's like on a cliff um it's like on a on an embankment because you kind of walk down into la perla and then you got like this beautiful sea view and it's like all these all these like body or like a hood it's a hood and so um so yeah i i stopped recording but these you guys didn't stop recording i think two of them got stabbed um just because they didn't they didn't listen and they probably didn't understand like what was happening and kind of like how you did didn't understand it, it was even though you speak spanish there was a little bit of a communication barrier and well, so they probably didn't react as fast or or they just ignored them completely like come on man we're just gonna keep recording and, and that's how they got caught up yeah i mean they know enough to say no delete no 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 delete you know if, if somebody come to you and point at your phone and say no delete delete you, what you gonna I'm do deleting every month, i'm deleting everything <laughs> anything i got picture tropical and then it get deleted <laughs> <laughs> i'm be like i'm going all the way back to when i got on at to the airport them all everything getting deleted <laughs> ain't nothing worth my life <laughs> i'll delete everything every picture of a po po a coconut palm tree is all getting deleted but, but you know the driver told me she said i'm surprised they ain't take your uh your camera or whatever and i was like for real she's like but i said because i think it was just an event and it was so many people so many eyewitnesses to yeah. where it was like you know we can't do nothing to this dude or whatever so um so yeah it was just it was just crazy but you know hey it happened it's just like the the guy um let me see the guy in chile um black guy in chile that got uh, yeah that was one of the stories that i um i i included in our promo video on uh youtube and instagram not youtube instagram and a uh, reel and um yeah he was in chile and got murdered he was in a, a, a somewhat a rough neighborhood i think it was yeah, yeah he was and he was taking video taking photos he was a photographer by you know traveling and taking photos for Instagram and was murdered. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, yep. thirty-eight year old Staten Island lawyer killed by yep. traveling in Chile. Yep, that's the one. I, that was the first video that was included in our promo video on Instagram, a reel on Instagram for tonight's show. There's video. I mean, they got audio of what happened to him. I mean, I think it's playing now, but 
You can just Lost. unmute it. Mike. Shot a so heartbreaking. Eric Garvin went to Santiago with his best friend. The two stayed in separate parts of town. And when Garvin's friend couldn't find him, well, he went to the U.S. Embassy to report him missing. But instead, he was dead in a hospital morgue. Chilean authorities telling the family Garvin, who, as you mentioned, was an avid photographer and explorer, may have been wrongly targeted in a drug turf war. Eric Eugene Garvin visited over 40 countries, many with his older sister, Naomi. There they are in Cuba. He made friends very quickly with our hosts and her extended family and even some of the neighbors on the block. But yeah, he never, he never had a concern about going out of the country. But on vacation in Santiago, Chile, Saturday, January 14th, he was shot and killed, taking a picture. From a father's perspective, this is the, the darkest day in my life. Uh, in my wife's life. His father and sister flew to Chile to meet with investigators who are reviewing unreleased security video of the crime. What they told us that my son was innocently walking down the street. He paused for a moment. He took a snapshot of a building in a drug infested area. And immediately following that, three Gentlemen came across the street, grabbed my son, stole his phone, and they shot him three times. And he died there on the scene. The 38-year-old attorney by trade graduated high school in Maryland and moved to Staten Island a decade ago. He lived a life of exploration and service inspired by his dad, a former U.S. Air Force colonel. When he was going to law school at University of Maryland, he met a homeless guy by the name of Donnell. And Darnell had this growth growing on the side of his face, and he had no idea what that was. And my son said, hey, you need to go to the doctor to check that out, make certain it's okay. And what he ends up finding out was that was cancerous. And if it was left untreated, he was going to die. My son going to law school, he was, he was using uh, his advocacy for those who are often uh, not paid too much attention to. Gene, as his family called him, also worked with former Mayor de Blasio's office on community initiatives to reduce gun violence in areas like Brownsville, Brooklyn. Oh, I want people to be more like him, right? I want people to make space for each other. Um, I want them to be curious about meeting each other and about experiencing each other's cultures. His sister. Yes, yes. Tragedy. Yeah. yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, um, so, it's, you know, we talk about this, me and you all the time, that when you when you go to certain countries, Colombia being one of them, um, in Mexico now up and coming, people are always asking, do you feel safe? Mocha just asks, our family members saying, why you want to go to that country? Um, and, and we've talked about this with the violence that's happening um, here in the U.S., you know, we don't know how life is going to go. It's unpredictable. Um, so you stay prayed up. You watch your surroundings. Um, you do as much as you can to keep yourself safe, um, as much research as you can. Um, and you pray that nothing like what happened to Mr. Garvin um, happens to you. Right, right. Uh, Mocha had another question, especially the men in those countries approaching you. Or oh, tell them about how them dudes be pulling up on you. Uh, Mocha, um, surprisingly, they're 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 not disrespectful. And and I don't mean surprisingly because men are disrespectful. I'm not saying that. Um, what I'm saying is they don't tend to um put their hands on you. Now smooth talking. <laughs> yeah, they they more they are definitely more smooth talkers. You know, when I go to a club in Atlanta or Miami or Vegas or L.A., their method of getting your attention oftentimes is, put. you know, I just went to a party on Saturday and you walking through the crowd and somebody grabs your arm. You know, they touch you. That's their way of getting you, you know, pulling you to the side. They don't do that in other countries, especially because I'm tall. So <laughs> they tend to be, you know, they want to they want to rap to you <laughs> they want to rap to you they want to get to know you they want to romance you they want to they want to get in your ear and you know they want to talk to you they want to because they know that you diff they they know that you know they different because they have accents and this and that and they have a little extra appeal so they think um so they want to talk 
they want to they want to get you in alone um they want to dance they it's just different it's just different so but i still keep my spidey senses up now <laughs> because they'll still try to come back to your airbnb or your hotel or get you to come to their parties or and stuff like that so it's no different than wherever i'm at you always pay attention to where you're going you if you're traveling with if i'm traveling solo um i don't entertain men mocha it's public only so we can go to a public dinner you know at a restaurant or meet for drinks uh we can be at the club or the bar or the lounge listen to music you know go to a public party a festival but there's no coming back to the airbnb there's no coming back to the hotel there's no going to their place like solo travel there's none of that none of that is happening because you need to be a little bit more mindful when you're with in a group trip with your girls you never separate i mean the same group same same rule supply ladies you don't leave your girl behind you don't let your girl go somewhere alone um you always stay together you always stay in a group if it sounds too good to be true it probably is um and you just you know you be very mindful of what you're being asked um and what you're being asked to do where you're being asked to go or where where you're being asked to be a company so no typically i'm not um i don't feel you know uh, afraid or anything when i'm being approached uh, i'm as polite as i possibly can be uh, and i know how to say no i'm not a woman who doesn't doesn't say no thank you no thank you you're beautiful thank you thank you thank you no thank you no thank you you'll get that you just learn to put your backbone in and just just say no and be gracious still be kind and keep that hell no in your back pocket in case you have to be a little bit more firm with your nose yeah good stuff good stuff um and you know actually guys have to watch out too um you guys have to watch out for women who um come and they they throw them nice suave hips and they they me and more me and more and, mm, mm, and poppy getting getting poppy yeah poppy poppy and they can kind of set you up to get bumped you know because they you know you could just be so infatuated with her to where somebody can come by and bump you and they're going into your pocket that's one of those distraction type things they do um i've, I've seen it a couple of times happen to uh, some guys one the girl distracts you and then the guy or the other girl or like two girls will come and approach you oh baby 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 and they kind of you know corner you in and they they rubbing on you and they, oh, oh baby you know mm, mm, mm. and they done slid into your pocket and got your money or got your wallet wait what about the ones that want to come back to your room or your airbnb oh those are always they, that's that's good <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nah see you he, fellas he gonna get you he said y'all up <laughs> he gonna set y'all up that's, that's you, gotta tell the truth, man. you gotta tell them the truth no i mean to be you you should everybody should know you should no, not bring no, anybody no, back no. to your house we're not doing everybody no. should know because we know it happens we know you meet a shorty out and y'all go back we know we know it happens so just be real well for as let's say well we're talking about being safe right oh we oh we're talking about being safe so yeah you need to i mean these are the golden rules i mean you know we're talking about safety but if you want to go over the list you know put your belongings up put your belongings in the safe um make sure everything is locked down um um it's, it's good to have front desk you know i mean these are go for these are for like both situations guy or girl um because if you have front desk you know usually going to make sure they take the id um they're going to make security. sure you don't have front desk security those places yeah. that have security are great too although they yeah. rob you but i'm just saying oh yeah they could be in them plot too mm -hmm. so but um security um so if you get an airbnb sometime it may be in a condo where they have security but it could be like a standalone house where there is no security and then you know you got to make sure that the person you bring in you vetted them pretty much yeah you know? um 
I sometimes like to, you know, lock the door. You know, usually if um, most of the time in these Latin or South American countries, they have a double deadbolt. Um, so when I lock the door from the inside and and hide the key or something like that, to where, you know, I don't keep the key on me. You know, yeah, because uh, a lot of people are being drugged, and um, especially like in Medellin, Colombia. Um, of course, you know, I, I think everybody from the basic have known to not leave your drink you know standing or whatever don't let nobody else pour your drink for you don't let nobody pour your drink for you yeah you yeah yeah cover your drink with ladies yes yeah, so if you if you leave your drink and come back to it just throw it away leave it alone yeah you know it's no need to even you know trip about four dollars five dollar drink or whatever but um yeah i mean those those are uh essentially the the I think the basis of it, I think you should do that here in the States or whatever. Yeah. No, and uh, I will add this male or female, don't give anybody your accommodations like address. Like, don't tell them where you're going to be at. <laughs> like, you can bring them there. I and mean, I'm not going to say you can bring them there. If you're going to bring somebody there, if you're going to take those risks and bring somebody there, you bring them there. You don't text them the address, like, meet me here. Just don't, don't. Don't let nobody know, especially ladies. Don't let nobody know where your accommodations are, like, because you'll have a mom show up <laughs> unannounced. Yeah, they yeah. come unannounced, Adrian. They come unannounced. I was waiting for you. <laughs> you know what? That actually happened to me. I know it did. <laughs> I know it did. So don't let nobody know where you stand, people. Just yeah, you need to be. I know, I know it's hard because you see beautiful people and beautiful people like be other beautiful people, but you know, it's you really have to be very, very cautious and and like he said, vet them out because it 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 could be the difference between life or death. Yeah, yeah, um, yes, because I mean, it all boils down to money. They trying to find the money, uh, which leads me to another story that recently happened in DR. Um, and this goes into like talking about like how you use money. You know, uh, myself, I use my card. Uh, you know, I call my bank, tell them, hey, I'm going to be uh, on my credit card. I'm going to be out of town. I like to use my card. I like to have cash on me or pesos or euros on me. Use the card. But sometimes you're in a situation where you have to go to the ATM. So I was pressed in a time um, leaving to go to the airport. My flight was at 4.45 in the morning from Santo Domingo. Mm -hmm. And so I would have did an Uber, but I did a, um, it's called end driver, which is like a, you kind of negotiate your price and you pay them in, in pesos um, after the destination. It doesn't do like electronic uh, payment. Mm -hmm. like Uber. And so I'm, um, mm -hmm. Starting to go in drive because I thought I was gonna get it a little cheaper to go to in driver, which you know I should have just went Uber anyway. Um, so I had to go to the ATM, and uh, on the way, the guy's like, Um, yeah, um, yeah, it's gonna be this amount. And I'm like, Oh, man, I gotta go to the ATM. So he's like, Well, we can get to the airport or we can do it this other way. He had all these other crazy ways, and I'm like, Nah, we we're just it's like four or five ATMs on the way to the airport. The air from Santa Domingo to the airport is like a 30 minute ride. So I knew it was going to be some some ATM, but it's like, you know, it's like it's like 1230 at night. So I'm like, OK, we can, we can stop at one of these places. We, about 15 minutes into the ride, I see an ATM. Or I see a gas station where an ATM possibly is going to be. So in Santa Domingo, like if the, the gas stations are closed at like midnight and one they usually have atms outside so but the air the, the the parking lot is blocked off by chain like you can't really drive into the gas station you have to park mm -hmm. like on the side street so i saw one he stops i get out the car i come under the chain and walk to and it's it's lit it's not like well dark. lit, but it's lit you know it's, it's not like a lot of dark spots so I, he said yeah the atm is like in the front part of the store just the entrance Right here is the ATM. So I go to the ATM, and um, as soon as I'm about to put my card in, I hear on the side street about 15 yards away, I hear two doors slam. Doo -doo. 
So I look to my right and I'm putting my card in the machine. Two guys are kind of walking slowly towards me. So my intuition kicks in and says, cancel this transaction. And I'm like, yeah, cancel. So I canceled it and I got the car and I walked back and they kind of walking this way and I'm walking this way, but they kind of like almost about to intersect. So I, I walked to the guy, my, my driver's car and I'm like, yo, I think, I think they was going to get me or whatever. And so he leaned forward. He was like, who? He's like, oh, I said, look, I said, so when I turned around, so you could be like, well, maybe they was going to the ATM. When I look back at them, they got their backs to the ATM looking at me. <laughs> like, where are you going? Did and you I, get some money? <laughs> <laughs> so the driver said, oh, we go jump in, jump in. Let's go, let's go. So we jumped in and we was out. So moral of the story is use your card, one. Two, in these places, try not to use outside ATMs. Use ATMs in the mall, in the grocery store, um, because so at many bank. at a bank or whatever, um, the outside ATMs don't use the outside ATMs because so yeah. many people from up from a building across the street, anyway, anybody can kind of see you pulling money out, you know. Yeah. I, so I think I, the fact that I didn't pull no money out is why it ain't just like, you. Yeah. yeah. I I always ladies guys do different things than us we <laughs> i always make sure i got money before i leave the airport so and usually before i leave the states because our exchange rate here in the u.s is going to be typically going to be better than what you're going to get abroad so i'll i make sure i have enough cash on me and then i don't have to use my atm card i always use a credit card now there's some countries where and there's only a few where you can't use your U.S. your U.S. Uh, credit card. Cuba is one of those countries. Um, so I just brought enough cash for the week, and I I hid my cash all over that damn room in in locked places, um, so that I didn't have to have my cash only in one spot. So if they went in my, if they broke into my, they give you a, a safe. They would only would have got twenty. Cuban dollars because I didn't put no um, big money in there. I hid my money in other places in the room, places unsuspecting. Like I taped it under the bed, some money under the bed, and I did it in small batches. Like I taped it in the cabinet, I taped it in a in a. You know, left some money somewhere around. The no, place. I know where all my money is. No, <laughs> I do that in my own house. I I take I have money in different spots. <laughs> because I don't like all my money being in one place. So, right, 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 um, right. you know, I, and then I kept most of my money with, you know, a lot of my money with me, not most of it, but I kept money with me, but I would put it places like in my shoe. Like we, we, women wear bras. I put money in my bra. I have a little purse that you can wear in your pants. So it's like a, a, a fanny pack, but it's real flat. Um, and it, it's real flat against your body, flush against your body. And I, I kept a lot of my money in there. And another thing is that I did was you don't pull out your money in front of everybody. Like you only keep about, you know, I say maybe $80 or 80 US dollars worth of whatever currency or country you're in and kept that with you cash wise. So you can buy from vendors or give tips or pay for food. But um, if I needed more money and I had like money in my shoe, I would just go to the bathroom and get the money out. And that way I'm not pulling out wads and wads and wads and wads of money. So that it always looked like you have a, a, a small amount of money. So if somebody did take my purse or take my bag, they wouldn't get a whole lot of money because I don't have, I don't have a whole lot of money in there. They're going to get hand sanitizer, some, you know, <laughs> some Clorox wipes some soap. You know they're gonna get that kind of stuff. They're not gonna get a whole lot of money out of my out of my bag. So uh, that's another thing to kind of be mindful of. Make sure you've done your research about what kind of money you need to have. Um, in Europe, I I didn't even use cash at all in Europe. I used credit card the entire trip, and that was, uh, you so know, they you a credit card. It's cashless there. Right, 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 right. Well, the credit card conversion rate versus me getting cash was a whole lot better. Uh, there was one restaurant where we thought in Paris we would have to use 
have to use cash, but even they were cashless at this point. Um, so uh, uh, do your research, find out what the currency is, find out what the best thing to do as far as, I always say credit cards are always going to be your best bet. Visa and MasterCard, uh, American Express, um, some places vendors don't take American Express. Some places, some countries don't use Discover or they have very limited use of like your Discover. So uh, Visa and MasterCard are, are generally accepted in, in most places in the world. But do your research, find out what your exchange rates are going to be and make sure you have enough cash on you to, and if you need more that you can go to a bank or the airport to kind of get that kind of um, exchange. Don't rely on ATMs. Um, yeah, don't rely on ATMs. Um, cause like you, you, and in, in even a lot of these Latin and South American countries, you can, um, use your card. Um, and I, I was just messing with you about the, um, leaving your money around. Um, I, I definitely oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> recommend, um, I leave some cards around in other spots. I leave some cash around in other spots. Because if even if you just lose it, you know, I had one friend that <laughs> had all this stuff in a little satchel and um and and left. Well, he he claimed somebody stole it or whatever, but um left his wallet somewhere or his wallet was stolen. And I was telling him, um, I was like, What did you have? He said, Yeah, I had that and I had my passport. I said, Man, I told you leave your passport in the room, leave your passport in the room. If you don't remember nothing in this this whole live, leave your passport in the room. If you got to rent a car, use it to get a car and bring it back to the room. Because I, I've seen a lot of people get robbed out in the streets and they had their passport on them. Yeah. You don't really need your passport. You can use you your regular nothing. You the only time your... The only time you need your passport is when you're going from border to border. Then you'll need your passport. But from day to day, just bring your driver's license. Yes, yes. And even, I, I was about to say, if, well, I rented a car or whatever. Um, but even with um, with renting a car, like I didn't have my passport because I left it in the room. They was like, can you email us a copy? Always have a copy in your cloud. Google Cloud, Apple Cloud. Yeah. Keep a yeah. copy of it there. That's just as good as the physical um, copy. Yep. You can email it to, I, I emailed it to the dollar um rent a car place um and they were cool with that so leave your passport in the room <laughs> yeah and you always want to take a picture of your passport driver's license any other kind of travel documents you have anyway because if something happens and you're in another country you need to go to the u.s embassy so always find out if the u.s has an embassy there um and because that's where you're going to go with all that documentation to prove who you are if you need to get another version of your passport yeah, because and this applies to cruises like, too, you guys. If these all of these travel tips, being safe on cruises, I went on a cruise and a, a, a entertainer got off the ship um, in Jamaica, and he didn't get back on. He was murdered in Jamaica. Oh well, uh, yeah, that's so. Yeah. You need to. It, this is not just for flying somewhere. This is also for cruising. You you have to take your passport when you get off a cruise. No, you don't have to because you have your little cruise port card. You get a little cruise card that is your identity. So you don't have to bring your passport. You can leave it behind. So as much as possible, try to leave your passport in your accommodation somewhere safe um, where you can have access to it later. Yeah. Because even if you, your wallet gets stolen or whatever, um, you can always rescue yourself some money. Because um, you know what? You got your passport in the room yep. to identify yourself. So you yep. always circles back to leaving your passport in the room yep and a lot of countries take apple pay um so if you don't have apple pay use that get apple pay use that <laughs> use that as your cash like there's so many things that you can do uh here's another travel tip that we haven't talked about uh, and i think both of us um absolutely use this and that is travel insurance Oh yeah, good. Travel one. insurance, um, you know that little checkbox for your flights, and they say, "Do you want to tr use travel insurance to protect your flight?" You know, you don't have to just use that. Do some research. I use, I I use so many different. 
go you can go to travel guard you can go to i mean there's a number of travel insurance alliance travel i mean alliance is another travel um insurance company um but you can do your research what you're looking for are a couple of things you could get basic travel insurance that will cover your flight and accommodations in, in case of cancellation or um something happens you can get it to cover your luggage but i also like travel insurance for medical emergencies which we have not even touched uh, and maybe we need to do a show about or a, a segment about that on the next show maybe uh about medical emergencies abroad um but travel insurance that have medical components will be a lifesaver for you should you have a medical emergency while you're outside the u.s um it's no guarantee that your aetna or your blue cross and blue shield that 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 hospital is going to take that insurance so having travel insurance that has that medical component um can, could be a lifesaver and we're talking about helicopter you home lifesaver we're talking about you know uh going to mexico or, or and having something done and then the surgery is they asking for a thousand dollars that you don't have so i mean medical insurance is going to be a lifesaver for you um if you have travel insurance so that is a absolutely must have before you make any take a step on an airplane to go out of town out of the country you should have some kind of travel insurance mm -hmm. yes yes um cool all good stuff um we are over um is it so who was Naomi Gar? That name sounds familiar. So was that? Apparently, she was the entertainment. So, in Atlanta, you're in Atlanta. Um, there was a, a radio show on called The Two Live Stews, Doug and Ryan Stewart, who were sports uh, broadcasters. They were on ESPN um, and they had their own sports radio show. And she was. Um, was that Jazzy? She was the entertainment reporter. Jazzy. I, I don't remember Naomi. But um entertainment reporter on the two. I remember Jazzy old crazy laughing cell. Jazzy was funny. So um, yeah, the young man killed in Chile was her brother. Okay. Yeah, so um condolences again to them. Um yes. Uh what can, I, and I feel vulnerable in other places we ain't caring unless we got a hookup for a weapon or a bike or <laughs> man I'm telling you you should feel vulnerable here in these states man you live you in Atlanta, Atlanta. Atlanta. No, I'm saying you live in Atlanta Shoot. <laughs> man Atlanta is under siege man it is under siege um <clears throat> yeah so cool um Oh, she used to fill in for Jazzy. Oh, man, I miss Jazzy, her laugh, boy. But um, good old days, the good old days. Um, cool. That's um, that's it, man. Kesey said he's packing. Where you headed, Kesey? Yeah, we got to get Kesey back on the show, man. Kesey got a great, great connection with these cybersecurity guys, man. He's getting them in shape. He's mentoring them. Got a lot of good stuff in there. Check out that cybersecurity show. We got to get them back on again and um, talk more about that. And I still need to be getting with him about um, that. Um, oh, what's the name with that platform? Um, with the VM and CyberArk. I just been oh, doing video. He's talking, about, he's talking packing that heat. He ain't talking about packing to go nowhere. He's talking about. Oh. Well, you can't take it. He can't pack no heat. Yeah, exactly. You can pack some heat abroad if you want to. You're going to be hemmed up at the airport, especially at Atlanta Airport. Oh, man. It's, it's so many guns at Atlanta Airport. It don't make no sense. Um, Yeah, they be having them pistols in the airport all the time. <laughs> but, you know, that's Atlanta for you. But, um, what else you got? Um, let's give it up for. I'm gonna say, let's give it up for Tiffany's um, nice dreadlocks. Oh, yeah, thanks. I'm joining the lock community. Tiffany got the locks. Damn. 
I like those though. It's nice. Thank you. Thank you. Um all right. So anything else for now? Just don't be afraid to travel. Don't let you know the tips and tricks that we offered you guys tonight is to help you feel more secure. Um, there are things to watch out for. There is no big bad boogeyman, no matter what country you really want to go to. Be mindful of the climate, be mindful of your surroundings, do a little bit of research. YouTube will be your Bible for travel, TripAdvisor. Um, TikTok is now a great resource for travel. Um, you know, you can follow myself at Sports and Heels. You can follow Travelmatic. He has some fantastic travel videos um, with recommendations on where to go and where to stay. Um, and so follow him and, and, and recreators like him. They're going to offer you some great advice no matter where you're looking to go. Um, and, you know, be mindful of your surroundings, guys. Have a great time. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy life. It's too short to, you know, to not take these trips because a little bit of fear. Bring some friends along with you if you don't want to go by yourself. Find a travel group. But whatever it is, stay safe. Enjoy. And go see the world. It's a lot to see. Right. I tell you, watch that 10 o'clock news in there. Y'all go see. It'll be like, God dang, let's stay this where I'm at. Regardless of where you at, it's gonna be unless you're in North Dakota or something like that or something. But um, all right, that's it. We are gone and we'll see you on the next Matic Monday. I highlight you, Tiff. All right, all right. Good all right. Bye. Bye. BS3 Network, changing the way you watch TV.